And how's it going guys, Joshua Lufemi here. And in this story time vid, we're gonna be talking with Nigerian director Clarence Peters, who's gonna talk about three crazy stories that he's experienced out in the field, directing music videos for Nigerian artists. <laughs> Clarence's work has been one of my biggest inspirations since like high school, so that's been over 10 years. He's directed videos for A-list names like Tiwa Savage, DeVito, Wizkid, Banky W, DeBanj, Nato C, Ice Prince, P-Square, Burna Boy, Don Jazzy, Diamond Platinums, Lynx. As many of you guys know, these are totally household names to anyone that's listened to West African music. I'm on a protein diet. Say mama, I keep quiet. Mama, she never diet. Say Sammy Bosch. Say Sammy Ganja. Let go by Louis Vuitt. Any money, just put it on repeat. Ah, it just shaku shaku. The VIP match it jaku jaku. La du komio, tinti yo. La du komio, tinti yo. So Clarence told me three stories. The first story involved him having to shoot two music videos over a single weekend, and on the preceding Wednesday, I found out that the artist had taken off to Ghana. Publications say I signed a record deal. What you hearing? They know very well I signed a distribution deal. And so they did everything to get the artist to come back to Nigeria. The artist got back on Saturday. Lagos is divided into the mainland and the island. We were shooting on the mainland at our studios here, and the artist got into the hotel and started saying that, well, they're not going to go on set if they didn't have a certain face wash. So they had to go to the island to get the face wash. Then they got back and the artist was like, he needed to eat. And then after a while, the artist said, well, I'm not going for the shoot. And that was that. Monday's shoot did happen. Bottom line is we built a set of like eight rooms, a corridor, a huge set, and we could only shoot 40% of the of the video. The crazy thing about the artist is that every single time we put the artist in front of the camera and said action, the artist, the performance was amazing. So when we got to like the fourth set to set up, the artist was like, look, this is the very last thing I can shoot. Anything past this and that's it. So I had to just think, okay, fine. Then, you remember that we were supposed to shoot on Saturday and we didn't shoot. So we moved the shoot to like the, the next Sunday. We found out by 12, that the artist was only going to give us one hour of their time. And the video was, the entire video was built around the artist. So the artist came and was around for 45 minutes and was like, I'm, I'm gone. And that was it. There's nothing we could do about it. For luck, I give me love, oh. Now you the catch in my shot For your sake I go go touch you hey. We go drive around you for my Porsche hey, Baby Pana They say you like you all I, I get you all like Baby Pana Anywhere that you go the second story he told was pretty freaky in the realm of the supernatural. He told me about 10 years ago he was shooting up in Abekuta, which is a city about 50 miles north of Lagos, which is Nigeria's largest city, and that there was a settlement up there. And people at that settlement said if you don't do these specific sacrifices, your shoot won't go well. Now this is the weird part, we're shooting for a gospel group. So suddenly a guy went close to our generator, put up, brought out the padlock and locked the padlock and then our generator stopped working. We tried everything because we had a generator guy, someone who fixes the gen there, and he couldn't fix it. And then one of the producers went there and just spoke to them and pleaded with them and gave them some money. And they released the padlock and the generator came back on. Later on that day, we went into a village to shoot and there were like some elderly women there and just looking at us. And we greeted them and we said hi to them and all. And they just kept on having a very intense stare. I did about two takes. I was like, screw this man, let's leave this place. This place doesn't feel right. This is when we still used to shoot onto tapes. And we got back to Lagos and everything we shot in that place was erased from the tape. Did everything else kind of showed, but this it didn't show. And it was especially when an older elderly woman stood up and walked right in front of the camera. So she crossed the camera and everything from that point 
So he had another shoot a little bit later in the same city of Abekuta. Um, he was shooting this time David O's Fia video. The area boys, the street boys showed up, then two factions of the cults in Nigeria showed up and started pretty much fighting outside, outside the church. So we had a security in front. <clears throat> so we never finished shooting fire. The, the cathedral scene or the church um, sequence that we did, the area boys started, gunshots started going up in the air. People started breaking bottles, wanted to stab each other. I think I heard some people got stabbed. Our, our security like also brought out guns, but they just kept on thinking that they wish they had more bullets. So it was going to be a, a disaster. I had to think really quick about, okay, what do you have in the can? I had to gamble and say, okay, well, we'll find a way around it. And that was it. We had to call off the shoot. If anyone is ever shot in Lagos, you know the first person you want to sneak out is the artist. Because all the guys that are there, they're there because of the artist. They want money from the artist. So who are these people that Clarence are talking about that demand money from the main artist? They are the local street boys who commonly demand some sort of street tax from any film productions that are trying to operate on their turf. So if they aren't able to successfully demand that money from the main artist because the crew successfully snuck them off set, then those same street boys turn their sights to the actual crew and start demanding money from them. If the artist doesn't happen to give them any money, well, they're gonna face you and your crew. One thing that I know my crew are specialists at is that we're ready, once the artist is gone and we've packed, well, let's bring it on. It's going to get really ugly. Everybody there is going to <laughs> start being able to get ready to fight. Yeah, just to add to that, there's a scenario where I was shooting for an artist and it, the area boys came in while I was rolling and they slapped the artist while I was rolling. So we had to, we stopped the shoot and that was a wrap. And then we had to face the area boys. And everything just got all crazy from there. So yeah. Thanks to Clarence Peters and the team at Capital Dreams Pictures for setting the standards so high as far as Nigerian visuals go. Thanks for watching, guys, and as always, remember to keep it chill.